Hello everyone. Welcome to Supply and Demand lesson number three. This is the one on comparative statics. This sounds complicated, but it's not. This is where we just draw the supply and demand curves together, mark the equilibrium price and quantity. Then normally we tell some story, some simple story that moves one of the two curves. We remark the graphs. And then finally, we compare the original equilibriums with the new equilibriums, the original price and quantity with the new one. In this lesson, though, we're not, we're just going to skip the stories altogether. We'll do that in lesson four. We're just going to see the mechanics of what actually happens. All right. There are only four possible correct answers, and uh, I'm amazed at how many, I tell students this all the time, and I'm amazed at how many of them don't pay any attention to this, and they put all kind of crazy answers on the test which they should know are incorrect even before they turn it in. There are four possible correct answers for simple movements of supply and demand curves. The first is that the demand curve might increase or the demand curve might decrease. The supply curve might increase or the supply curve might decrease. That's it. There aren't any others. Okay, now it turns out that there are, I told you there aren't any others in kind of equilibriums where you move from one equilibrium to another. But there are two special cases that are not market equilibriums, but instead market interventions. And these are the binding price floor and the binding price ceiling. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to move this image out of the way. And let's see if I can get this other thing to come up. Uh, here it is. I hope you can see that. All right, so we have four, you see in front of you, four supply and demand graphs. Just a minute. So in the first case, in the first case, we have an, e an equilibrium where the supply and demand curve intersect, which would be here. We'll mark this the equilibrium price, P sub E, and the equilibrium quantity, Q sub E. And then the first example was that the demand curve increased. So recall that from lesson two, I think it was, when a demand curve increases, that's a rightward shift, something like this. The demand curve increases. I hope all of you can see that there will be a new equilibrium price established here. And these are our new equilibriums, PE and QE. And then I'm likely to ask you, anytime we do one of these on a test, I'm likely to ask you five questions. What happens to the demand curve? What happens to the supply curve? What happens to the quantity demanded? What happens to the quantity supplied? And what happens to the price? Okay, so let's do those. The demand curve has increased, obviously, because it's moved out and to the right. Hope you can see that. The supply curve, on the other hand, look at the supply curve. It has stayed exactly the same. Nothing has happened to the supply curve. But the quantity demanded, the quantity demanded was right here, right, at equilibrium. And now it's moved out here. So the quantity demanded has increased. The quantity demanded has increased. And the same thing has happened for the quantity supplied. The quantity supplied was right there. Because remember, when we were at equilibrium, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied were the same thing. So the quantity supplied was at the original QE black, and now it's moved out here. So the quantity supplied has also increased. That's a little bit messy, but at least in the end, the last question is, what's happened to the price? And I hope you can see that the price has increased. OK, so in the first case where you had an increase in the demand curve, the five possible or the five correct answers are the demand curve has increased, supply curve has stayed the same, quantity demanded and quantity supplied have both increased, and the price has increased. All right. The second example is where the demand curve decreases. So that would be a shift back to the left, like this. Demand curve decreased. Now, uh, 
uh, we had the original equilibrium. Let me go ahead and mark that. The original equilibrium was here. Equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And we have a new equilibrium down here where the new demand curve intersects the supply curve. So this would be the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. And now the uh, five answers would be the demand curve has decreased, the supply curve has stayed the same, the quantity demanded has decreased, and the quantity supplied has decreased, and the price has decreased. One more time now, the demand curve has decreased. Hope you can see that. The supply curve, which is this thing, has stayed exactly the same. Nothing's happened to it. The quantity demanded has decreased from the original equilibrium to the new one. The quantity supplied has done the same thing. It's decreased from the original equilibrium down to the new one. And the price has decreased. Okay, so that was number two. The third one, let's go ahead and get our equilibrium price and quantity on there. So the third one I think was an increase in the supply curve, an increase in the supply curve. So that's a shift to the right, would look like this. And then we would establish our new equilibrium here. So I hope you can see that the answers are the demand curve has stayed the same. Look at this thing. It hasn't moved at all, right? It's right where it was. The supply curve in this case has increased. See that? The uh, quantity demanded was at the original equilibrium quantity and now it's at the new equilibrium quantity. So the quantity demanded has increased. The quantity supplied did the same thing. It was at the original equilibrium. Now it's at the new equilibrium, so it's also increased. And the price has decreased. So to repeat, in this case, the demand curve stays the same. Supply curve increases. Quantity demanded and quantity supplied both increase. And the price decreases. All right, in the last case, we have our original equilibrium. And in the last case, the supply curve uh, decreases. So when the supply curve decreases, that's a shift to the left, something like this. And then uh, we establish a new equilibrium here. So let's see. In this case, the demand curve stays the same. Look at it. It hasn't moved at all. Demand curve stays the same. The supply curve has decreased because it's shifted back to the left. The quantity demanded was at the original equilibrium and now it's at the new equilibrium over here. So the quantity demanded has decreased. The quantity supplied has done the same thing. It moved from the original equilibrium to the new one. And now in this case the price has increased. So I'm not too good at memorizing things, but I know some of you are. So you might just want to memorize the uh, things that happen in each of these cases so you can check them against your answers on any test. Uh, there's a few things that make it kind of simple. If you notice, in every case, one of the two curves moved and the other did not. Also, in every case, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied did exactly the same thing. If one increased, so did the other. They never moved in opposite directions. So these are the answers when you move from one equilibrium to another. If you notice in all four of these examples, we were at equilibrium, and then we moved one of the curves from some story that I haven't given you yet, but we moved one curve, then uh, we kind of let the dust settle and the equilibrium was reestablished, and we just compared the original equilibrium to the new one. That's why these are called comparative statics. So uh, that's the end of lesson number three. 
And in the next lesson, we'll just do the same thing over again, although I, in that case, I'll give you some little stories. And you can practice uh, reading these little uh, situations, these little stories, usually from current events, but sometimes from history, and try to identify which curve to move. So these kinds of problems have really two parts. The first part is, hey, which curve am I supposed to move? And the second part is, well, once I've moved the curve, can I identify what's happened to those five things? The demand curve, the supply curve, quantity demanded, quantity spot, and price. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.